Okay. <coughs> These are the guys from last time. And what do you guys do here? <coughs> Factor of secant squared. I'm going to change one of the secant squared to one plus tangent squared. And then u can equal tangent. u is secant squared dx. This one, tangent cubed. <laughs> So if cosine cubed is u, uh, what would your du be? What's the derivative of cosine cubed? Negative 3 sine squared x. You guys are just guessing now? What, what is it? Negative 3 what? Is it a cosine times sine? Cosine, cosine squared times sine. Cosine squared times sine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Helpful? No. No. Okay. Yeah. Could you write uh, uh, the negative 3 times sine? Yeah. Negative 3 times sine. 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 change 10 squared x to secant squared x minus 1. Your u is 10x, your dx will be secant squared, which is okay for this guy, not for that one. Okay. And you can uh, save a factor of secant uh, x times ten uh, ten in x, um, like from the inside of the parentheses, like a secant x minus one over secant x um, parentheses times secant times ten. I I don't follow. Come again, secant x minus one times minus one over secant. Like one divided by c k. How are you getting this? Where? Where does that come? From? Like, um, save a factor of c k. How do you save a factor of c k? C k isn't a factor. The two factors are c k squared minus one, and the other factor is tangent. You. Uh, you equal c k times. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, c k. Okay, I like, sorry. Can, can I what? I like what he just said. You like what he said? Yeah. He said. You, you well, equal secant x. 
U equals secant. Could you, could you, um, like, yeah, sure. U equals secant. Okay, but then du would be what? Secant tan. Secant tan, and you Is can, that helpful? you can get a secant from, uh, from these other four things. Yeah. By do, doing do, what? Do you, end, uh, can you do, um, can you distribute the tan? The difference of two squares. So you, the difference of two squares. <laughs> Uh, you can think of that as a difference of two squares. Not helpful though. That will actually make it worse. Distribute. No, that, that's not what I meant. Like, well, that's, that's secant uh, x. So that's what you meant. Okay. And um, what would happen here? Uh, yeah, it's not as helpful as I thought. I mean, I did. I did u equals tan x, but that didn't. If u equals secant yeah. x, du equals secant x, and multiple tangent x dx, yeah. then you can do the first part of this integration. Okay. Then do the second part minus tangent x dx. Yeah, do one at a time. Right? Yeah. The integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals. Yeah. That's a rule. Um, so you just focus on this and that separately. Yeah. Here, a substitution can work, and it turns out that either secant or tangent could be the substitution, <coughs> right? Because if your u equals tangent, the du is the secant squared. Versus if your u is secant, the du is the secant times the tangent. Either way, you're fine. Um, u equals tangent seems like less work to me, though, so I'll go with that. <coughs> so that is just the integral of u du, where my u is tangent, minus, separately, the integral of tangent. So this is going to be u squared over 2 minus integral of tangent. How long is secant? How long is secant? That took too long. That should be memorized and known immediately. OK, so tangent u squared now is just tan squared over 2 minus ln of secant x. Yeah, sometimes just multiplying out can uh, be helpful. Like if you realize your substitution, like there's something in the way of your substitution, this minus one, just separate it. <coughs> so there are uh, two parts to this. Um, so one, you want to learn to make um, educated guesses, what kind of a guess would be a good guess versus a bad one, right? So, substitution of uh, cosine cubed, you should, you should kind of know that that's going to be a bad one, because you're going to have a product of cosine and sines there, which you didn't have. Um, and a, another thing is to uh, actually recognize when you're on the right track, because we actually did a little hiccup when I wrote this. Like, you guys should have noticed, oh yeah, that's exactly what we needed, right? The fact that you didn't immediately notice that is another kind of red flag. So you should know what's not helpful, but also know what's helpful. Because I've seen it both ways. I've seen students, they started going down the right track, and then at some point they just mess up, right? So, <coughs> so that's secant cubed. Now, this one is a very interesting one. Let's put it that way. I believe in you. <coughs> Let's go. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, seven, uh, factor out secant squared. So secant squared times secant. And then substitute the secant squared with 1 plus tangent squared. The, uh, so this one? Mm -hmm. And then multiply it out. So it's secant. Uh, secant plus secant tan squared. Secant plus secant x tan squared. And then separate it up, like separate it like we did last mm -hmm. one. So you can just do integral of this dx. And then on the right side, you do u equals tan. Or 
u equals tangent, your du would be a secant squared. So that's uh, Other ideas? Uh, tan tan square x equals secant square x minus one. I do that. The second part. So we have secant dx plus, multiply this out, you get secant cubed x minus secant x. This kills that. So secant cubed is secant cubed. <laughs> well, technically you're not wrong, but you didn't actually do what you're supposed to do. So yeah, that doesn't work. I'll just give you guys a this one where we have to... Uh, multiply by something over something and it's weird? No, but uh, <coughs> could that you think of that? I'll give you the hint right now. Hint. That was hinted. Hint by parts. <laughs> Integration by parts is how we're going to do this now. <laughs> Me telling you that, what do you think? Is it tabular integration? <coughs> well, it depends. What are the parts? So it make you secant squared and secant. <laughs> and then what? Uh, I think secant squared is u. No, it's secant is u because if you integrate secant squared is tangent, right? Uh, yeah. Right. So you want to make secant the u because you know how to integrate this easier. Yeah. And it, it actually gives you something with the first power. Yeah. So you might guess, okay, u equals secant. Your dv then will be secant squared dx. That you know how to integrate easily. That's tangent. Uh, your du would be secant x tangent x. So this is equal to u times v minus the integral integral of v times du. Now what? Now we do the tabular integration. With who? <laughs> Just going to keep throwing out methods. I'll be right one day. <laughs> uh, integration by parts? Yes, you're correct. <laughs> tabular. That's a new buzzword. That's what all the kids are talking about. What we did last time can actually work out. Let me give you another hint here. Does that help? Sure, didn't we try that already? Oh, it was very different the first time we tried it. The first time we tried it, what was in here was uh, something different. What we had here was the integral of secant, remember last time, which uh -huh. is not secant tangent. Okay. So this is actually different from last time. Um, 
So eventually you'll notice that we could then <coughs> multiply this out secant cubed. This would be a plus. Could you add the, the first integral to the left side? Right, that's the, that's uh, the original guy. We already know the, the integral of secant x already for that. Right, so that's over here. Yeah, and we do know the integral of secant x. We derived that last time. If I can just move that to the other side, I would get 2 times that integral, then divide by 2. And this integral is going to be what? So this means that the integral of secant cubed dx is going to be equal to 1 half times, well, secant x tangent x, plus the integral of secant, which we now know as ln of secant x <coughs> plus tangent x plus c. <coughs> At this point, I'm just going to say something that might seem kind of crazy at the beginning. Uh, well, it's going to seem kind of crazy. But, um, I want this to be one of your basic rules now. Like this, memorize this. This is something you know now. It, surprisingly, secant cubed shows up all the time, somehow. It, it just happens. Don't ask me why. It just happens. So now the integral of secant cubed is something that you know. It's 1 half times secant x tangent x plus ln of secant x plus tangent x plus c. This is now one of your basic rules. So know that. If you do enough calc 2, you will realize that this guy shows up all the time. Throughout your studies, you're like, what? I never saw that integral. Why did Jamal make us memorize it? It means you're not studying. <laughs> you do. If you go through like all the problems in any Calc 2 textbook, <laughs> that guy's gonna pop up several times in any set of exercises. Why? Don't ask me why. It just does. Um, yeah. So if we see secant cube, integral of secant cube. Yeah. You can immediately word. just do that. Oh, so we don't have to show. Word. Yeah. No. So this, by the way, this is. I'm going to actually show you another way to derive this, but this is traditionally how it's derived. Right? This is one of the, the main examples whenever someone's <coughs> teaching integration by parts. It's a, very, cause it's a very strange application of integration by parts. Usually integration by parts comes when you're, you're multiplying two different kinds of functions. Well, here we have two trig functions. It's a t and a t. Kind of, it's kind of weird, but uh, that's the way to go. I'll actually show you another way to derive this, but uh, that's, this is the traditional way. This is the way that most people know about it. Secant cubed. Now, what I'm going to talk about later is going to suggest to you, might suggest to you why this guy ends up being so common, but um, just believe me, it's common. It's something that shows up all the time. You might as well just know it. Integral of secant cubed is one half secant x tangent x plus ln of secant x minus tangent x. And we can just do d. Huh? And that's just. Yeah, now this is just like that part, which you now, you just do that. So, so for d, it's just, that it's just two rules added together. Yep. It's now d. So I believe last time I wrote these down in the opposite order, but I guess no, if they, if they figure out this thing, you know that. Um, so if you had secant x times tangent squared, what you would do <coughs> is secant x times secant squared minus 1 dx, this will give you secant cubed x minus secant x, and the secant cubed is 1 half secant tangent.
Okay, so uh, trig identities and all that stuff, gotta know. Now I'm gonna teach you a, a new technique. Still involving trig functions. But now, we're gonna take substitution and put it on steroids. We're gonna do what's called trig substitution. So trig trigonometric substitution. It's a whole other technique. It's um, substituting, uh, making a substitution based on some kind of pattern now. I'm going to describe the method in pretty much a table. So that there's a certain expression that you can see, and then whenever that expression shows up under certain situations, you would consider doing a trig <coughs> substitution. So that's the this is the expression you'll see. Here's the substitution you're going to make. And here's what's useful for back substitution. So here's the expression. Um, you might see the expression that looks like x squared minus a squared. Now, it might have a radical around it, might have a cube root around it, might have a lot of things around it, but you see that x squared minus a squared. Here, um, on, in this entire table, a not equals 0 is a constant. So you see x squared minus a constant. And you can think of that constant as, say, something squared. Right? Now, what you're going to do is you're going to want to think of this as some sort of trig identity, namely a Pythagorean identity. Now, we know the Pythagorean identities, hopefully. So the Pythagorean identities. These are the ones that says cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. Which means uh, it also implies that if you're to divide both sides by cosine squared, you get 1 plus tangent squared equals uh, secant squared. If you divide this both sides by sine squared, you get cotangent squared plus 1 equals cosecant. Now, for trig substitution, we don't really apply this guy for traditional reasons. Um, but this guy here would imply that uh, I can have a cosine squared replacing a 1 minus sine squared. So I can see an expression like 1 minus sine squared, and I would uh, be able to replace that with a cosine squared. Now, here's something that might look... Uh, strange at first. I'm going to multiply both sides by a squared. And this would mean that you have your a cosine squared is going to be your a squared minus a sine squared. Okay. So this is the important thing that we're looking at here. Similarly, I can take this one over here, and if I multiply by a squared, I can have a squared plus a tangent squared would give me a secant squared. And also, if I solve for the tangent squared and multiply by a, I can get a tangent squared would be a secant squared minus a squared. And those are the other two. All right, so I take the Pythagorean identities, multiply through by a squared, and I solve for some special guys. Now, you might say I don't see why we'd want to do that. But 
Notice what would happen if I think of this guy here, A secant, as some variable like x. What you'll notice is that this expression over here, now it looks like, like an x squared minus an a squared. Right? Which, <coughs> hey, that's a familiar expression. So it turns out we can take advantage of the Pythagorean identities and kind of visualize some trig function being there, even though a trig function wasn't there. So um, just because <coughs> x is, of course, different from the angle, so I'll use like theta for the angle. <coughs> so the x squared minus a squared, it kind of reminds me of this guy. So what you would do in this substitution, you would say x e equal to a secant theta because then this entire expression, which has two terms in it, will collapse to a single expression, which has one term in it. And that's useful, especially if you're under a radical or something. Okay. So that's the right substitution for this guy. Now, I'll, we'll do examples, but making this substitution can be very beneficial every now and then. Of course, it'll automatically mean if you're differentiating dx would be the derivative of that, a secant theta tangent theta d theta. Right? Now you can do blah, blah, blah. This will be useful in some sort of integral. It will transform your integral from a situation where you don't have trig functions to a situation where you do have trig functions. You're going to solve this. You're going to get an answer in terms of those trig functions. Now, because the problem started out with x, you can't give an answer in some other variable. You always try to change the variable back, right? You back substitute the u. How would you do that in this case? Well, um, what you can use is Sokatoa. <coughs> so if your x is equal to a secant theta, this means that x over a is equal to secant theta. Now, secant theta, you can remember by Sokatoa, this is going to actually be hypotenuse over adjacent, which means you can imagine this triangle being drawn for the secant, where the hypotenuse is x and the adjacent is a, which by Pythagoras' theorem, this side would be the radical of x squared minus a squared. And you'll see that expression x squared minus a squared popping back up here, which will help you with back substitution. So, yeah. In a similar way, we can fill out this table. There are three main varieties you want to know which are highlighted here. So if I see an x squared minus an a squared, I can do this substitution. And surprisingly, that's convenient a lot of the time. If I see a squared minus x squared, it kind of reminds me of this relationship here. And I would put x equals a sine theta. Now, of course, with that substitution, your dx would be a cosine theta d theta. And of course, the back substitute, your x over a is going to be the sine. But we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that gives you a triangle where the opposite is x, the hypotenuse is a. So this will give you that a squared minus x squared. Now, it's worth mentioning here that we could substitute a cosine theta for exactly the same reasons, but it's just, it's usually never used. It's not wrong, it's just for some reason no one uses it because they don't like the negative that shows up. But technically, an a, cos, a cosine substitution is a valid thing. The other scenario, x squared plus a squared. Now that reminds me of this, because I have a, um, a squared plus a variable squared. So, the correct substitution here is going to be my x should behave like a tangent. So I can say x equals tangent theta. Of course, it would mean that my dx consequently is a secant squared theta d theta. And of course, this would mean that x over a is tangent theta. Tangent, I know, is opposite over adjacent. 
I should say we know, which means if I can draw a triangle opposite over adjacent, which means this is going to be the square root of x squared plus a squared. So this is now pretty much a table that you know. So I see an expression like this, I can make a substitution like that. <coughs> There'll be times where this will be a good idea versus a bad idea, and we'll talk about that when we get to it. Um, if I see an expression like this, I can make a substitution like that. If I see an expression like this, I can make a substitution like that. Now, before I say anything else, let's actually jump into an example here so we can see the situation here. divided by the radical of 4 minus x squared <coughs> now you see an integral like that what do you think what do you what do you what would you try <coughs> it's a second expression it's a second expression wouldn't be what you try though. First thing you're going to think, is there a basic rule that looks like that? No. Can I simplify <laughs> to make a basic rule? No. Can a substitution work? Can a substitution work? That looks like it should be... If you were to substitute, what would happen? <coughs> what would you substitute? Yeah? You would substitute the denominator, 4 minus x squared. U equals 4 minus x squared. Your du would be? Um, 2x dx. Minus 2x dx. Yeah, minus 2x dx. And then? Um, and then you can bring the, the negative to the other side. Yeah, we can bring, uh, say, 1 over 2x du to the other side um, equals dx. You can now go plug that in. That's the square root of u. Um, your dx you can write as minus 1 over 2x du. Here we have our x squared. Number x, cancel that, and you would be the proud owner of the x over 2 radical u du. Now the fact that there's an x there is a problem. What is the x? A sine theta. Well, no, no. To continue with the substitution pattern, what would our x be equal to? Root 4 minus u. You can solve for the x here. Take the 4 minus u, and take the square root of that, divided by 2 times the square root of u. One thing you'll realize if you go, try to go purely by substitution, you'll get in trouble here. That's not easier than the original integral. Um, it's actually a lot harder. So substitution would not actually work here. I'll talk about why in a bit, probably next class. But if you, you thought, oh, substitution, right? Now, you know such as over there because I just was talking about it. But if you, this was a random integral that showed up in the middle of test one, like how do you know? Oh, yeah, this is definitely, uh, yeah, right? Substitution would not work here. But I thought about it. That's the important thing. You always think about it. It is always the third thing you think about. Okay. So now that we know substitution won't work, forget about integration by parts. You can try to get integration by parts to work as you want. Uh, to you. Um, now I'm going to actually show you how something like this can save us. Now I see this expression here. So I look at that, I realize that substitution won't work. And again, I'll tell you how to see that quicker in a bit. But if I look here, that thing makes the, the thing complicated. There's a radical of 4 minus x squared. The radical of a sum, very difficult to deal with. If only there was a way to turn this sum into one thing. That's exactly what the trig functions do. They take two things and transform into one thing. Um, so now what you'll also notice is that guy looks like a 2 squared minus an x squared. It's a constant squared minus x squared. Constant squared minus x squared. You see this pattern here lies right there. Right? So a substitution won't work. 
So the next thing you'll probably try is a trig substitution. So what you can do here is you can do a substitution. Set your x equals, what would it be? 2 sine theta. Because your a is 2 in this scenario. This means your dx is going to be 2 cosine theta d theta. And this means what? So now we're going to go in and we're going to plug in all these substitutions. Everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with 2 sine theta. So my x squared is going to become a 4 sine squared theta. Now, my 4 minus x squared, what would that be if my x is 2 sine theta? Well, I'm going to write it out now, but in general, I don't expect you to write this out. Um, so this will be 4 minus 4 sine squared theta. The dx would become 2 cosine theta d theta. And again, here, this is 4 sine squared theta. Now, 4 minus 4 sine squared theta is what? You can factor off a of 4, you'd be left with 1 minus sine squared, which is cosine squared. So the denominator is just the radical of 4 cosine squared. Now, the radical of 4 cosine squared, what is that? That is 2 cosine theta. So, I probably wouldn't write out those two lines. Uh, you'd probably pick up by just writing this directly in here. 4 sine squared theta, this will end up being a 2 cosine theta times a 2 cosine theta d theta. Now, this would cancel that, and we just end up with 4 sine squared theta d theta. So we go from this integral, which it feels like a substitution should be able to work, but it's not going to work, to this integral. Now, this integral should be easier for you. How do we do this integral? It's the same as 1 minus, <coughs> uh, nope, never mind. How do we integrate sine squared? Spoke about that last class. One half. Yeah. It's negative one half cosine. Oh wait, no, no. <coughs> one half x minus oh, wait, theta minus one half sine two theta. It's one half the quantity of one minus cosine two theta. So it's one minus cosine two theta times a half. And so that becomes uh, 2. And that we can integrate easily. That's theta minus 1 half sine 2 theta. And to know your third identities. Not knowing the rules will bury you in this class. You need to know the trade identities. You need to know all the formulas. So that's actually not d theta. Actually, you've integrated already. Now that's actually the answer. However, that's the answer in thetas. What would it be like? What would it look like to have the answer in x's? So here's where the third column comes in handy. You have to do that back substitution. So now for the back substitution. What I'm going to realize is that I let my x equals 2 sine theta. This means that my x over 2 is equal to sine theta. This means I can set up a triangle where that's opposite over hypotenuse, opposite hypotenuse. This would be 4 minus x squared. And I can actually use that to find uh, the cosine. Now, this here, sine theta is just x over 2. 
it also means that my cosine theta would be what here? <coughs> And by the way, sine 2 theta is what? <coughs> 2 sine theta cosine theta. You need to have that memorized. Which means if I multiply these two, I get that. Well, double it, right? Which means now what I can do is this sine 2 theta here. I can actually replace it, so this is 2 sine theta cosine theta. What about the theta? That's arc sine. Right? That's arc sine. If my sine is this, my theta is going to be sine inverse of x over 2, which means I can substitute sine inverse x over 2 minus sine theta, which is x over 2, times cosine theta, which is that. 4 minus x squared over 2 plus c. So my answer is actually uh, 2 arc sine x over 2 <coughs> minus x over 2 radical 4 minus x squared. And that would be the integral of that guy. Now, as you can probably, do you have a question? So, yeah, on like a quiz or a test or something, could you just leave it um, back here? You get the distribution to yeah. Like this? Yeah, this will be fine. Okay. Yeah. Now, of course, here you realize that is kind of annoying for trig substitution, isn't it? And the answer is yes, it's annoying. But I'll talk about, in some situations, how you can get away from that. So, take this as a lesson and go forth and do the following problems. So, here are some examples to work on next time, because your quiz next time will cover everything up to the trig substitution. But we'll finish up these examples next time. Wait, sorry. It doesn't, does it include the trick Yes. Okay. So, examples for you to work on over the weekend so that by Tuesday you will be ready. A. Now, this is one that you know by heart, but just for practice, I would like you to derive it using trick substitution. What is that, by the way? Reverse tangent. Inverse tangent plus C. Uh, B. Now these last two here, it turns out that a regular substitution would actually work. And hopefully by going through those two examples, you can probably see a pattern as to when a trick substitution would work versus when a regular substitution can do the job. But the others, uh, using just a regular substitution is not going to get you anywhere. So practice those for next time. See you.